Hello everyone, this is Professor Ryan Paul and this presentation for my English 1302 class is about organizing and drafting your essay. So let's begin by reviewing some of the stuff we've talked about in terms of organizing your essay from the introduction and the big picture issues. So remember when we talked about introductions and we looked at the introduction handout, a uh, lot of different techniques and strategies that we talked about. And we talked about some of the main functions of introductions. Your introduction announces what your topic is and identifies the problem or question, the specific facet of that topic that you're gonna discuss. It establishes the context, sort of limits the topic, says I'm gonna be talking about this part of it, not all of this, and it orients the reader in that context and it engages the reader. It gets the reader interested in the topic. So let's look at, just uh, as a brief example, let's look at go back to that elusive theory of everything article by uh, Leonard Mladenow and Stephen Hawking. So if we wanted to just give a brief summary of what this essay is doing, uh, this essay, the purpose of this essay, it's to explain the challenge of fa uh, that, that's facing the scientific pursuit of a single theory of everything it's explaining why this is difficult, perhaps impossible. And it's also presenting this idea, the author's theory of model dependent realism. So that's the basic purpose of the essay. Let's look at the introduction, which is really a series of seven paragraphs. It's a long introduction, but let's look at that and see how that works. So it begins with this goldfish anecdote. And that's one of the strategies that we talked about when we were looking at introductions a couple of weeks ago starting off with an interesting story, an anecdote, something that dramatizes or exemplifies your topic. So the goldfish, goldfish anecdote is, is an interesting way to start the topic because it's an unusual story. It's a little funny, it's a little weird, and it grabs our attention. So it's engaging us. Then they raise this question, is our perspective really any more true, more accurate, more real than what the goldfish sees? And that's a provocative question. It's an interesting philosophical quandary. Well, how do we know that what we see is any more valid than what the goldfish experiences? And that's also the central question of the essay. That's the problem that they're, that they're investigating. And those first two things happen in the first paragraph. And then in the second paragraph, they show the relevance of that question. They say, well, Yes, it's an interesting philosophical question, but it's also a real question for physicists. The difficulty of determining if our perspective on reality is valid or more valid than any other. So this shows the relevance of the question and it establishes the context of the essay. That is, we're not talking about goldfish and we're not just talking about philosophical questions, but we're specifically talking about this quest to find a unified theory in the sciences. The next four paragraphs or so then further explain the topic and the context. They further elaborate on this issue of the difficulty of, of finding a unified theory and they orient us by defining some of the key terms that we're going to deal with or the key ideas, concepts that we're dealing with this in this essay. The idea of realism and, and the perspective of the classical scientific model, which is that there's an independent world, external world, independent of our perceptions, um, and it's out there and we observe it and the information we get from it is based on reliable sensory data versus the anti-realistic view, which is that our perception of the world around us somehow shapes it, that the world that we see is subject, is not independent of our per perception, which is something that quantum theory in physics also asserts, that the reality that we see is only a series of probabilities until we actually measure it and observe it. So this is again, further elaboration of the problem. And finally, in the last paragraph of the introductory section, they introduce their solution to the question, their thesis, which is model-dependent realism, that as long as 
the model that we're using agrees with our observations, that's all we need to worry about. And if multiple models can explain our observations equally well and agree with them, then no one model has a right to be considered more true than any other model. So this is their solution. So we've got this, it's a long introduction, it's seven paragraphs. Uh, this all could have been done in one paragraph, although of course it wouldn't have been as detailed, they wouldn't have been able to provide as much information, but it accomplishes all the major tasks, right? It grabs our attention, it tells us what the problem is, it shows us the context of that problem. We're discussing the problem of perspective and, and knowing reality versus um, if what we see is, is some sort of illusion, not in a philosophical sense, but specifically within the world of physics. It explains the context, gives us the key terms, and it provides their solution, their answer to the question. Okay, now that we've talked about the introduction and looked at that introduction from uh, the elusive theory of everything as an example, um, the next step we were talking about last week was breaking down your paper into different sections different parts or sections based on your topic, based on what question you're asking, what are the areas that you need to address? For example, you might want to talk about history. You might talk about competing theories. You might talk about major figures. And as I said in class last week, it's a little hard to be specific here because it's going to vary depending on the nature of your topic. In the elusive theory of everything, again, going back to that essay as an example, just to see there's three major sections. There's the introduction, which doesn't have a specific title. There's one section that's labeled frames of reference. And then there's a, a section labeled glimpses of the deep theory. And in the introduction, what they're doing, it's where they, again, establish the problem of the unified theory and they offer their solution of model dependent realism. So then, in the next section, frames of reference, they define that concept. What is this idea of a model? What is a model? They define the scientific uh, model, the concept of a scientific model, and they provide examples of it. So if they're going to offer us this solution, they have to explain what the concept of a scientific model is. And then in the third section, glimpses of the deep theory, they talk about string theory and M theory as the most promising slash controversial attempts to establish this unified theory. And they explain that really what they are, what M theory is, is a network. It's a map of different models of showing how these different models overlap and can be used to observe different aspects of the universe, but none of them is on its own completely sufficient. So we get these glimpses, we can see little bits of it, but we can't see everything at once. Just like we can't see the entire world at once. We need multiple maps to try to picture the whole, the whole world around us. We need multiple models to try to picture the universe. So we've talked about the introduction and then breaking the essay down into major sections. Let's look at another example. Uh, this is the Corporate Social Responsibility article, the second one that I posted to Blackboard. Uh, it's from the A to Z of Corporate Social Responsibility Encyclopedia, and this is off Credo reference through our library's website. So let's see how that is broken down. It's a longer article, it's a little bit more complex, and it's more geared uh, towards academic um, purposes rather than the elusive theory of everything, which is more of a general readership uh, article. So let's look at this one. So it has one, two, three, four, five, six major sections. The introduction, a section titled Evolution of the CSR Concept, Business's Interests in CSR, The Business Case for CSR, Examples of CSR in Practice, and CSR in the Future. So they introduce it, they talk about how the concept developed, 
They talk about what interests a business has in this concept and then why businesses themselves might support the idea of CSR. They give us some specific examples and then they talk about how this concept and practice of corporate social responsibility might develop in the future. Now let's talk about methods of organization. There's a number of different ways that you can organize your essay. And as we talked about last week, these this is on uh, ranges from the, the macro level, ways of organizing the big sections to within each section. How do you organize the details? Um, and these methods, as I'll show in a moment, overlap. They're not necessarily, or they don't uh, uh, exclude one another. You might use multiple ways of organizing your ideas. So we talked about some of the major ways, com uh, chronological, simply talking about a subject, it might make sense to talk about it from early to late. If you're talking about the history of something, chronological organization makes sense. Shorter sections to longer sections, or simpler ideas to more complex ideas. It's often easier to start off with something that's short, something that's simple, something that's more familiar before going to something less familiar. So these are some of the more basic ways of organizing, real simple ways, ways that are uh, easy for your reader to follow and that do a good job of setting up the reader, allowing them to get into the more complex issues as the paper goes along. Some other ways of organizing, and again, there's overlap between these different methods. Strongest ideas or evidence to the weakest ideas or evidence. What's the what's the stuff that's that seems that you have the most detail for? What's the strongest case that you can make? What's the argument that has the strongest perspective or, or best evidence supporting it? The most important ideas to the least important ideas, which may coincide with strongest and weakest or may not, uh, or sometimes vice versa. You might want to build up from the least important things to the most important. Earlier understanding to prepare for later understanding. That's sort of like simple to complex things, but not necessarily that they, they it, it just means the things that the reader might need to understand first before they can understand later issues. So as we'll talk about in a minute, understanding the history of a subject before knowing the future of a subject. One is not necessarily more complex than the other, but you need to understand one before you understand the other. And general analysis to specific applications, talking about a subject in general to then giving examples of it. So let's look at the organization of this essay. Again, these big sections, um, introduction, evolution, business interest, business case, examples, and CSR in the future. As we can see, there's actually um, there's some overlap here. There's multiple ways. The, the author is using a few different methods of organization, a few different principles to, to organize these major sections. So there's a sense in which it's chronological, right? They have to talk about the evolution of CSR before they talk about the future of CSR. And that's also an earlier topic that prepares us for its later topic. Uh, also on that subject of earlier things to prepare us for later things, they have to define CSR before we can explain its value or give examples of it. We have to define what it is before we can um, show it in practice. And then general to specific, it explains CSR earlier and then gives us some specific examples in practice. We can also think about as I said, thinking about organization, not just of the big sections, but then even within the sections. So this is in that first section, evolution of the CSR concept. These are just the topic sentences of each paragraph. So the definition of CSR has evolved, dot, dot, dot. A brief elaboration of this def definition is useful. First, just as a society expects a business to make a profit, it also expects blah, blah, blah. The next two responsibilities, blah, blah, blah. Finally, there are discretionary or philanthropic responsibilities, though this four-part definition includes blah, blah, blah. And then finally, whatever the definition used. So these are the topic sentences. And you can see there's, as we'll look at in the next slide, uh, a few different overlapping systems of organization here. Right, it gives us 
goes simple to complex. It says the definition has evolved over decades. It gives some details of it and then says a brief elaboration is useful. So it gives the simple def definition, then gives more detail, more specifics, a more complex understanding of it. It begins, it goes from more familiar to less familiar. In talking about a business's responsibilities, it begins with the most familiar responsibility that a business has, which is to make money. And then it proceeds to slightly less familiar, right? Okay, we first thing we expect a business to do is to make money. The second thing we expect it to do is to do so by following the law. The third thing we need to do, et cetera, et cetera. And then the last thing that we expect a business to do is to be philanthropic, that is to give money away, to be um, uh, a charity type organization, right? That's not that we don't expect businesses to do that, but it's the least familiar of a business's and the least common of a business's uh, responsibilities. Okay, now let's talk about what your homework is, what the next step is for you after you have watched this video on organizing the essay, breaking it down into different sections. So what I want you to do is to draft an outline, an outline of your essay, and that should include the introduction. And I want you not just to include a, uh, an outline of the introduction, but actual the actual introductory paragraph or paragraphs that you've written. Remember, we did that for an exercise a little while back. So you can reuse those or revise them or write a new introductory paragraph. Make sure you've identified each of the major sections, three, four, five major sections that you're going to have in your essay. We did, we did that last week as well. The key points for each section, and we talked about that last Monday. Um, what are the, the main points that you can make for each? And then the next level, which is what are the details or evidence in support of each of those key points? So I want you to try to get you know down to at least like three levels of detail from the major section to the major points in each of those sections, and then the, the details of each of those points. So here's just an example of what the introductory section or what part of the elusive theory of everything would look like in outline form. Um, I've put together just a, a possible, uh, one possible outline of the first few paragraphs, um, the introductory section, where we've got some main ideas, introducing the idea of perception versus reality, the scientific discoveries, how they challenge our conventional idea, defining quantum theory. Um, and under each of these, I've kind of broken it down. So the, the specific details, the idea of realism, alternate theories, classical f physics, uh, the def definition of particle of, of, excuse me, of quantum theory going on, uh, their solution, model dependent realism, getting into section two, frames of reference, right? So you can go back and I'll, I'll put a copy of this also um, on Blackboard in print form so you can look at this and compare it to the essay itself. But this is just an example of what your outline might look like, something like this. Um, this is the outline, again, based on elusive theory of everything, but you can use this as something of a model for drafting your own. So again, just the details for this, you want to include the draft of your introductory paragraph or paragraphs in your outline, identify the major sections of the essay, list the key points for each section, the important details are evidence for each key point, and it's due by the end of day on Wednesday, the 20th, this week. If you have any questions, feel free to send me an email, let me know. Um, I'm happy also uh, to set up an appointment, uh, even though I'm out of town right now dealing with family issues, I am available to meet via Zoom. So if you want to set up a, an online meeting, just let me know. Otherwise, I wish you the day you wish yourselves, and I hope you have a good week. Be on the lookout for uh, my emails with instructions for future assignments for the rest of this week. And otherwise, I will talk to you soon. Have a great day.